Hi folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out the video game adaptation of the board game Patchwork. You can find it on Steam for about 5 bucks, though as of the date of this recording, there's a 30% off sale going on, so if you like what you see here, you may want to grab it while you can. So, what is Patchwork all about? Well, I own the board game, and I've played it, really enjoyed it. It's a two-player game where players draft these Tetromino pieces, and they're trying to put these pieces in the most efficient manner possible onto their own boards or quilts in this case. There's also a time mechanic where um, each piece will cost a certain amount of time and that will move their piece up the time track. In addition to that, there are buttons which form a currency in this game. Each Tetramino piece will cost a certain amount of currency to purchase, um, but you'll also be earning these buttons as you play the game. So it's an interesting uh, two-player abstract game but again there's also some drafting elements to it some currency management it'll make more sense once we actually run through a tutorial or practice game whatever the game happens to offer i just got my press code so this is going to be my first time playing the digital version so let's go ahead and take a look here uh this is my profile that's the top left button here you can change your profile picture uh, there's a few things. Now, everything is like geared around toward tapping this or sliding, as you can see here. So this is definitely a uh, iPhone or Android game first. I don't know what device it's on, but I, I, it's definitely reminiscent of a phone game because it's got that, you know, press tap to do this or slide to do this language. Uh, then you've got like achievements, statistics, ranking, and replays. You can search for players down here. Um, you can load any notifications or messages that you have. Um, there's more games you can check out. I have uh, covered La Havre the Inland Port before. It's an excellent game. Recommend checking that out. I have not played Agricola, All Creatures Big and Small, though I have played Agricola, the core game. I have the uh, board game here at home. Um, let me close that real quick. Uh, not that. That closes the entire game. Top of right-hand corner here, you've got Ranked Game, Casual Game, Local Game here. I don't think it can slide down now. Okay. Then you've got uh, any sort of running games. Uh, basically, you can play uh, online with others. You know, you make a move, then, you know, a couple hours later, your opponent will log on. They'll make a move. You know, sort of like the old chess games that we used to play back in the day where, you know, you play online against someone, but it could take days or sometimes weeks to play because you're making moves. Uh, but not, not online at the same time. Okay, so here's the tutorial. We'll more than likely go through that so you get an idea of what uh, I said at the beginning of the video. There's your settings here. Gameplay speed, score calculation, uh, music and sound effect toggles. I have the music off for the sake of the commentary and to prevent copyright issues. DLC. Now, it's kind of misleading because um, even though DLC implies that you're buying something, you can activate these now. That's what you're buying here. Again, it's $5 on Steam, so you can switch your theme if you want to outer space. There's green pastures. I'm sticking with the classic for right now. And then you've got your credits. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the uh, tutorial real quick. Actually, before I do that, there are buttons on the very top too. If you click on this top button here, you can uh, start an asynchronous ranked game if you want, or you can join a queue uh, for a one fast game with a uh, short time limit. So you can do that too if you want. I'm not going to do that. And then, of course, there's a button over here for messages. But let's go into the tutorial so I can sort of show you what I was trying to say at the beginning here. And again, this is a two-player game, not three or four. It's just two players. Okay. So my trusty Alfred and I will help you become a master yourself in no time. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to paraphrase what they say here. Basically, we're trying to make blankets, and we'll be making our blankets out of little patches. Every button you own at the end provides you with one point. Every hole in the blanket costs you two points. So basically, you're again like I was saying in the beginning of the video, you're trying to fill up your your board or your quilt in the most efficient manner possible with as few few holes as possible holes will cost you points at the end and every button that you have at the end of the game will also gain you a point you can choose from one of two options during your turn you can either buy one of the three displayed patches or advance on the timeline and collect buttons and like i was saying 
uh, these patches or these tetramino pieces will cost buttons and will cost time. Okay, the past, uh, this patch, the one that's sort of shining here, will cost you two buttons and move you three spaces forward on the timeline. As, as both players have reached the end of the timeline, the game ends. Okay. Simply drag the lit patch up onto the blanket to buy it. So I can do something like this, something like that maybe. All right. Place your patch on the blanket. You may turn, flip, or move it around freely. When you're happy, use the needle to stitch it down. Okay, so I'm guessing that's what this is here, so you can rotate it. Again, I haven't played the digital version, so I'm just learning this as I go. Even though I'm familiar with the rules, and then this is flipping. Okay, and let's say that we're satisfied with this. Alright, now it's patched in. That cost me two buttons and three time. Okay, so basically now the opponent is taking their turn. Now, whoever's on the uh, their most rear part of the track will take their turn next. It's not like I take my turn, then the other person takes their turn, then I take my turn. They don't take their turn back and forth. Whoever's on the last space uh, or furthest behind will end up taking their turn next. Okay, so I have to buy another patch, so let's do something like this. That's fine. I'll just leave it like that. This patch moved you ahead of who in the timeline. Whenever a timeline token lands on another player's token, the top token gets another turn. Okay. All the patches are too expensive. You have to advance and collect more buttons. To do this, slide the button. This is what I was saying about sliding. Let's see that. So we're going to pass our turn and move up the track. Whenever you pass a button on the time track, you earn buttons. Please buy another patch. Okay, I guess we'll buy this one. The first player to build a 7x7 blanket with no holes gets a 7 bonus points at the end of the game. I call this the Alsize Blanket Bonus or Toshb. It sounds better in Alish. I bet it does. All right. The small patches on the timeline are acquired by the first player to pass them. You sew them into your patch immediately. Okay. Use them to fill small holes in your blanket. Yeah, like, again, it's kind of hard to see it from here, but there's little patches on the time board off to the left here. Again, those are one square patches that you can put on your blanket to fill holes. Last but not least, in case of a tie at the end of the game, the first player to reach the center wins. Now you know how to play patchwork. You may end the tutorial using the eject button in the menu or keep playing. I guess we'll keep playing for a little bit longer. Um, I'm looking here. It doesn't look like I have any buttons and I really can't buy anything, so I have to pass. And when again, whenever you pass, you move up to the space in front of your opponent. So I'm gonna be moving one, two, three spaces ahead. All right, and I earned three buttons as a result of that. All right, now my opponent has just two holes in their quilt already. All right, um, let's see here. I can only buy this piece here. So it's either I pass them up or I buy this one. Um, I really don't like this piece. It would move me up too. I would get to go again. Now, what, can I see the next few pieces? Yes, I can, okay. So if I were to take this one, it costs two time. I'd move on top of them and get to go again. That would leave me with two buttons. So I could then buy this one, which would cost me one button and five turns. Um, so I could, I could in theory, lay down two pieces. So I guess we'll buy this. But I'm going to rotate it. I don't like the way that is. Um, actually, let's rotate it so it's facing that way. And then we'll do something like that. Now, because I landed on him, I'll get to go again. All right. Um, I can buy that one or I can buy that one. Again, if I do this one, I'll move five spaces ahead on the track. One, two, three, four, five. Passing up this button here. 
so I earn buttons. Um, or I could just take this one. Again, it's a very cheap one. It's It costs one button only two time, but it doesn't have any buttons on it. So I think I'll collect this one and maybe we'll throw it here, but we'll, we'll switch it. We'll do something like this. And because I've got two buttons on my quilt so far, I earned two buttons for passing that button here on the board. Again, I apologize that I'm trying to explain this so quickly, but as you can see, turns are very quick in this game. All right, he gets to go again. Wow, he moved very far ahead. He's got a lot of buttons on his board, so he's going to be earning a lot of buttons in the game. Okay, so all three of these pieces do not offer me any buttons, unfortunately. Uh, meaning that when I pass the next button, I'll still only earn two buttons here. But they're relatively cheap. Uh, this one here would be in, well, see that three-year piece would not fit here. All right, let's do, I like this one here. I like that. All right, I get to go again because I'm furthest behind. This is the only one I can get. Um, that would cost me one button and three time. If I do that, one, two, three, I would still not pass the next button. So I'll just, I'll go ahead and do that. Put it here. All right, so he's buying another piece. He's on top of me, so he gets to go again. I think he passed. He gets a lot of buttons. Again, you get the you get a number of buttons equal to the number of buttons that are on your pieces on the board at that current point in time. He's got like seven. Uh, he's got seven buttons on his board. I only have two, but these pieces tend to be much cheaper at the same time. Um, this was a nice one to have, but I unfortunately can't do anything. Like I just can't buy anything, so I have to pass. All right, that gives me. Two buttons, because I have two buttons on my board. What's he doing? He's buying another piece with buttons on it. He's going to be rich in terms of buttons, but he's moving very far ahead as a result. All right, so we got one of those one-piecers. Okay, um, I could do this one. That'll give me one button. That'll cost me four time. One, two, three, four. That would land me here. Um, but the question is, do I want this piece? I'm thinking yes. But I'm going to flip that around and do something like this. And lock that in. He's got 14 freaking buttons. Alright, my turn. I'm still in the back here, so I get to go again. Um... Part of me wants to do this H. I could jump ahead three. That would do one, two, three, but I would... What are the next set of pieces? Okay, he can basically buy whatever he wants to at this point. That, that's how well off he is. My strategy is just going to have to be trying to... Hmm. I'm going to try and get this seven by seven if I can. All right. Um, if I buy this one... All right, I'm going to throw that... I have to rotate it. Actually, do do it that way, and we'll throw it here. All right, now his turn. All right, again with the holes. I oh, he's got one of those. Wow, okay, so he's making some really bad choices, uh, but again, this might be the tutorial level. All right, now I've got some choices here. Um, this one costs one button. It's going to be hard to fit, though. This one is going to cost me three buttons in six time, but it has two buttons on it, which will allow me to buy more buttons in the future, which would be good. Um, so, th But the question is, where the heck am I going to put this thing? I mean, I could fit it up here, but then I, I leave myself with one hole. I'd have to hope that I get to a patch 
Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I would not reach that. I, I might be able to reach it before he does. But this would still earn me, this would earn me two buttons. I don't know if I can not pass that up. Uh, this is tough. If I move two spaces, and anything I do right now, hmm. See, I really want those buttons. All right, let's do it. I'll take the risk. All right, so I'm going to put that. Again, I don't like doing that because that leaves the whole, unless there's a better way to do this. I don't know if I like that either. Again, we're trying to create a, a seven by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, see, we may not be able to fill this in the future. It depends on what comes up in the future. I don't like that either. I mean, there's this up here. All right, we could do this. That would prevent this from happening, like that that empty space or that yeah that little hole there. But this would make this a little bit harder to fill. Hmm. And I'm looking at the timeline up on the very top here to see if there's anything that I can fill those spaces with. Hmm. This one will cost. Yeah. You know what? Let's let's be on the safe side. I'm gonna try and pass them up and get one of those single patch things if I can. Alright. What's he doing? He's buying a cheap one from the looks of it. Putting it there. Doesn't move up very far. He's buying seven. A seven piecer. Putting it there. He gets to go again because again he's furthest back. What's he going to do? Eight. Oh, he's buying a six turner. Okay, so he's going to get a single patch again. I have a feeling he's always going to be ahead of me. He got 16 freaking buttons. All right. Well, let's see what I can do. Okay, this one here uh, will give me f one button. This one here is really weird. It's very cheap, but at the same time... Trying to fit that anywhere is going to be a pain. I'd rather go with this one myself. But the question is, where am I putting it? Doesn't really fit. Actually, it does. Um, why don't I do something like this? There we go. That'll move me up too. All right. And unfortunately, I have to pass because I can't afford anything. So that moves me ahead. I got some buttons. And for passing. Alright, so I've got 10 buttons. So I should be able to forward anything next time around. Wow, he's... His quilt's looking pretty darn ugly, if you ask me. I mean, he, he's lucky enough to get those single piecers. I'm not. Alright, now... This one is going to cost me 10 buttons? Ouch. I don't like any of these. Let's see, if I do if I do this one here that cost me 10 buttons, that'll move me on top of them, but then I'll have to pass because I'll be out of buttons. This one will cost me one. Oy, um, trying to visualize the best move. This will cost me 10 buttons as well in five turns. One, two, three four, five, and I'll get more buttons at the end of that. All right. Um, let's go with this one. I kind of like the extra buttons. And the question is, what am I going to do with it? Again, I'm trying to make a seven by seven. Do something like that, but is there going to be a T in the future? There's one coming up. It's worth two. If I'm lucky enough to get that, let's see, on his turn, he'll have access to these three. 
And then... That's... That's a risk. Alright, I'll go for it. It's also about planning ahead and fig trying to figure out what your opponent's gonna do, too. Alright, so that moves me up. I get some buttons. I get nine. Alright, so what's he gonna do? We've got the square piece. Damn him and his single tile thing. So he took that one, so I have a hole in mine, unfortunately. Though he has more holes than his than I do. Okay, so I can get this piece that I was looking for. This is what I was trying to get. And I did plan ahead the right way, so I do want this one. Turn it this way. I'll take that, stitch that right in there. Now I get another turn. Um... I could take this one, but where the heck would I put that? See, if I pass right now, I move up two spaces, and then he finishes first, and I'll get another turn. My goal is to make a 7x7. Seven seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to fill these two spaces, but I can't do that with what I have right now. So... I'm tempted to pass. Because I don't like any of these pieces. They don't earn me. So I want I want different choices. So he'll get to go. Pass me up. We passed as well. I'm surprised. <laughs> now if I pass. Uh, he knew what I was doing. That little jerk face. Alright. Unless I can buy something. And still have room to lay down the other piece. Like, if I can put this down in a way that... Now, see... It would have to be this one. Now, would I be able to rotate it? This one might work. I could do that. And then this one here... All right. Let's stitch that in. Yeah. And then I would get access to... Oh, crap. Oh, no. I wasn't thinking. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess... I mean, I guess I won't get my 7x7, seven seven, unfortunately. That's what I was going for, but... This isn't bad, either. All right, so I got some buttons. What did he get? He probably won this though, because he had he has plenty of buttons. Game over. Negative three twenty nine. So he was the victor here due to how many buttons he had. Um, I mean, granted, I had the nicer quilt, I think, out of the two of us. But with the number of buttons that he had on his. Um, the number of buttons that he had on his quilt definitely pushed him ahead in the end. Like, I had 13 buttons. He had 51 buttons total. So, he, good game on him, uh, definitely. I mean, his holes here really was his downfall. But, I again, I had more holes. I was hoping to fill in that 7x7 seven seven bonus and get more points. But I don't think it would have mattered in the end. So, um, I guess that's that. Exit game. So there you go, folks. That was a quick look at patched work. Now, I'm curious to see um, what the local play options are. There's guess. Okay, so you can play against easy, medium, or hard. I'm assuming I was playing against the medium opponent because that's who right here. So Lula might even be easier than what I was playing against. So if you play this game, I would recommend playing against Lula here first or play against a second player uh, and play both sides until you get a feel of how everything is uh, played. But yeah, so that is Patchwork, ladies and gentlemen. Again, five bucks on Steam. Excellent game. Really like the video game adaptation. Uh, if you guys want to see more gameplay, let me know. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And check out my official website, www.dadsgamingaddiction.com. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.